Good. I mean, that's kind of what I wanted this thing yeah. to be about. I, I didn't want to, you know, just show work and talk. I, I kind of want to get a sense of who's doing, who's doing what, and, and if we can all help each other and stuff. Um. I think I always liked Candid when the person's not really looking at the camera. You just grab, you capture that moment and they're not looking. It's, you kind of have people interpret what they're, what the image is about. Something like that. Cool. And what was your favorite assignment or assignment that he really liked one of your pictures? Uh, it had to be, to be, had to be the studio um, assignment. Our studio at school is not really up to par, not really updated uh, equipment. But I liked it because it was inside, you can control the lighting and control, it's a controlled environment. That's my thought. So you're a control freak? <laughs> It, it's okay. I, I think a lot of photographers are control freaks, right? Any anybody uh, attest to that? Yeah, there. I hear it. Yeah. <clears throat> a nice control freak, right? Because because photography is, if it's really right, it's it's magic. Some of these guys will, will attest to that. When 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 you're on, when you're at that moment, when you're not worried about whether you know. You uh, got to pay the rent or the car loan, or you know you got to pick up the kids or something. And when you just it's just you and, and whatever it is you're, that's in front of you that you're photographing, it's really really it, it's it's one of the most incredible things. And that's why I've been doing it for 40 years because I, I I like I like that wonder and that excitement and that sense of what's might happen in front of me or not. Getting the resources is the easy part. Okay. I mean, I'm going to be straight up with you. It's your desire. It's what you want to do and stuff. And I keep pushing that where um, hopefully you, if you continue this and I get a sense that you, you know what you want and I get a sense that you're, you know, that you should just at some point don't worry about what people think. And that it would be just Chris out there with her camera doing what she wants to do. Right? Mm -hmm. Because... You know, I, I, I've been very lucky, but, you know, prize or no prize, gallery opening or no gallery opening, I, I'll still be shooting. I mean, I'm, I've shot like 2,000 pictures not related to anything, just of the family, of the beach, and, and everything. So, um, you know, I just continue to shoot. So, and see, that, that's part of the pictures. I shoot, I shoot my kids no matter what. And that's, gonna, that's not going to go anywhere. I mean, that's not going to win a prize or that's not, you know, it's not going to be in a gallery. But I just continue to do it because it's something in my, in my DNA and stuff. And I'm hoping that you'll, you'll sort of get to that point or you're at that point where, you know, you invite me to your, your retrospective 40 years from now. <laughs> what, what got me excited is light. I like I like maybe trying to capture some of the feeling, the the memory that I have when I go somewhere. You like that? I mean, I'm just gonna get a sense. You, when you get the light right and you get your the right magnification of the the macro, you're 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 happiest. Yeah, yeah, it's Good. exciting and totally um, captivating. I'm just I can and you're you're do you, go you kind of get lost time. in it and you're kind of one of it. Good, yeah. yeah. So good, I, you know, get that, continue to have that sense of wonder, I think. I mean, that's, because if you think about it, I mean, what else will we be doing? If we're not making stuff, if we're not taking pictures and stuff? I mean, I, you know, we have kids, right? Pretty much all my life since high school, photography has always been there most of the time due to my career. It's been in the background, I'm still dabbling here and there to kind of keep it fresh. Photography, it's, you know, to me, it's, it's been in my blood from the first class I took in high school, and I was never been able to shake it. It's just awesome. Okay, did, did you take a lot of pictures when you were in the fire department? You know, I had a little digital point and shoot I take in, in, in my vest when I go out on fire. So I would take some pictures here when we were out there in the, up in the mountains and fire, and sometimes it's sunset, and the smoke and the flames are there, and you got that haze, and it's almost like a, a manila sun, sunset, you know, and it's just some gorgeous stuff, but it's just with the little point and shoots. Yeah, I do the landscapes, which is, uh, you know, I really like that, because Guam is just, uh, it's kind of like cheating. Guam is so beautiful, it's, there's just, 
to get out there, it's gorgeous. Black and whites, uh, but you know, always in the back of my mind, and I always gravitate towards uh, uh, candid portraiture, uh, industrial portraiture, or kind of like documentary. You know, that's what I really want to, you know, get get more into. You know, we have that uh, Bob Camacho and I have that uh, humans of, I mean, humans of Guam Facebook site where we're kind of dabbling into that, and uh, uh, so we keep ourselves busy and and keep you know keep challenging ourselves. I think I think I've always had like an on-off relationship with photography. Mm -hmm. I was never really a consistent shooter, like someone who would just always have their camera. So I think I'm at a point in my life where I'm starting to get back into um, visual art. But but I'm also I have all these different passions like dancing and um, I've been really in the in the past year or so I've been really trying to integrate all of them in some way. Um, that is really coming from within and it's expressive and it's just more it's more of a an introspective um, process and um, and so I've been working more with video um, so I recently I bought a camera that has a video where I could I could sh uh, you know you get HD quality and I haven't been as much as focused on technique I think I've just been more focused on, on um, exploring like a place that really means something to me. I actually like the video video work because I feel like um, because I do dance improvisations, so I like the idea of just being in the moment when I'm improvising. And then the video work is a way to choreograph. To me, that's there's two different things going on, and I like both. Yeah, Dave and I were talking about back in the day when we were shooting, it, it seemed like everybody was really protective, right, Dave? Oh, yeah. the work. Nobody shared. Because, you know, yeah. nobody wanted to no. get that account. Yeah. Everything was secret. You don't share your tricks. You don't share tips of the trade. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now all the tricks are on YouTube, man. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh. Everybody shares and collaborates, yeah. which I think is really cool. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I hated growing up in, in that, that era where every photographer that... Any photographer I assisted with and worked with, they would teach me enough to help them. But they would never give me enough, I mean, never give me some of their best tricks and some of their best techniques and how, how they could, you know, some of the gags that they would pull to get people to do things, some of the, the technical details of, you know, darkroom work, uh, camera gear. They, they pretty much all kept it to themselves, which was really sad. But I grew up with that, and yeah. you know, so it was always I worked with other photographers, tried to learn as much as I could, and tried to come up with my own ways of doing things. Um, but yeah, and then when you know when digital came around, and then the whole generation shifted, and it was like everybody was collaborating. I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. Huh. Yeah. And it, and it, and it's even more true here than in the states because I know here. Um, do, as a photojournalist, you know, we'd go on assignment and we'd always be like, we'd get our shot, then we'd get out of the way so somebody else can get a shot. And we'd be like, hey, you, you might be, there might be a better angle over there. But then I'd work with photographers who just transferred here, because PBN almost always brought in new photographers. They were brutal. Mm -hmm. You know, they'd try and block your shot. They would, they would stay in place so you couldn't get an angle. And I always thought it was bizarre. And so I always thought it was real, you know, journalism here in the 90s and 2000s, yeah, um, we shared. And even today, you know, I haven't been out in the field for a few years. You know, I got out of photojournalism for a while, but it was always cool, you know. And Subjects, you know, I love doing landscapes, but I also love photographing people, too. Um, I, you know... I, I think uh, using a camera as a way of like exploring uh, things, different subjects, and learning about things, and just uh, experiencing life, you know? Uh, I always like the thing that Henry Cartier-Bresson said, uh, which is, um, 
to make interesting pictures, all you have to do is experience life, and life will give you pictures. If I do something for myself, I'm doing landscapes. I just like being out in nature and uh, photographing uh, light, you know, the light uh, interacting with the landscape. It's just very elemental, very primal. When I was working with the, uh, the photographers when we did Festpack, and I went to them and I'm like, so how do we shoot this? I said, you go there and you belong. You belong there and you are the best photographer out at Paseo or Dededo or Agate. And they're like, what? Because no, you, your attitude is, you got to go out there and you're the best photographer. Even if I'm there, you're the best photographer. And I'm not saying that to be sort of as, as an ego thing. You need to go out there with confidence. You need to go out there and feel like you're doing your job, you're supposed to be here, and you're the best photographer, and that will give you sort of an impetus to do that. And the first few times they did it, you know, they were a little shy and stuff, but once they started going, they, they, they kind of had that mindset, and their work reflected it. And not because, again, not because they were coming from a sense of ego, but they were coming from a place of confidence and stuff. Mm -hmm. So Chris, when you go out there, even though I'm there, you're the best photographer out there. And, and you should really, you, yeah. should, you should go out with that attitude. I mean, you don't, you don't have to be mean, you don't have to block people and stuff, but just, just in your mind say, I'm the best photographer out here and I'm going to do my best. And it'll be amazing how much that can, you know, that confidence can help you and stuff. Um, you know, I, I started doing that. I mean, I was a young photographer and there were people from National Geographic and the New York Times and, and all these other people at these huge, big shoots and stuff. And I'm like, I'm saying, I'm going to kick your ass. No, I, you know what I mean? But I said that in my mind because then I needed to do my job. And if I'm being sort of shy or feel that, you know, I wasn't, you know, worthy or good enough, then the pictures will reflect that.